You're playing with distance fields. You got a couple of them. You want to merge them. To do that, you're supposed to use the mean function. But you don't want a common intersection. You want this. To organically merge distance fields, we need a function that smooths the area around their intersection by creating a continuous curve with no sharp angles. That's where the function smoothMean comes in play. SmoothMean is a fancier implementation of the classic mean function, which first identifies the area where the two gradients come closer than a certain threshold and then converts them to a continuous new function that approximates the usual minimum. As this isn't something I came up with, you can find plenty of information about this around the web. Best place to go, in my opinion, is the blog of the mighty Grandmaster Inigo Quiles, where you can find several implementations and in-depth math explanations. My job here will be trying to explain this concept in a visually intuitive way, so that even if you haven't a strong mathematical knowledge, you'll still be able to grasp the concept behind it. And not only, later we'll also see how with a very simple logic we can transform the smooth mean in a smooth max too. Among all the different implementations shown in this blog page, I stick to the most used and performing one. Actually, if you're just here to copy and paste the nodes in your project, I'll not make you waste time skipping through my video, here it is the implementation. And I'll tell you more. You can follow the link in the description and download it for free. And now, if you like to have control over the stuff you do, stick with me and let's go through how this function works together. Let's start with these two simple functions. These two inclined lines on Desmos can be seen as a cross-section of these two gradients here in a reel. The first thing to do is to calculate the difference of these two functions and take its absolute value. This new function represents the distance between our starting gradients, blacker the more they are about to intersect. Now the parameter k comes into play. It will represent the threshold that will define where we want to smooth the mean function or not. We can subtract our distance from it and strip out all the values below zero to obtain this spike. If you look closely, you'll notice that it is wide and tall exactly as k. Being tall exactly as k means that we can normalize this function by dividing by that value, which will bring it in a nice 0-1 range. This will be the value called h by Inigo. As it is now, composed of straight lines, h will just create a sort of hard-edged bevel between the functions, instead of a smooth curve. That's the reason why we have to now raise it to a power. That power can be any number above 2 to obtain a smooth curve, but the best compromise between look and efficiency is 3. After that, we have to divide everything by 2 to obtain what in Inigo's implementation is defined as m. And now, look at this. If we flip the descending side of this function, we obtain a gradient that can be used to interpolate the attributes that are part of the hypothetical two different materials that these two gradients may be part of. See, this gradient is black when the first function is lower than the second one, and vice versa, with a nice smooth transition in between. Let's go back to M. Last step is to multiply it by the ratio between k and the exponent we used for the curve, to obtain what Inigo calls s. And this is the function that finally will allow us to obtain a smooth minimum result. If you look closely, you can have an intuition for that. s represents exactly how much needs to be subtracted from the classical minimum function in order to obtain a smooth curve. Let's try and see if that's true. That's it, let's play a bit with k and see how that curve reacts.
It works like a charm. Let's try with two more complex functions. Now the intermediate functions are much less straightforward to understand, but hopefully after the wall through we just did, you can still read their behavior. So, this stuff is perfect for organically merged distance fields, but what if we wanted to hate blend two materials, for example? In that case, we normally want to pass through the highest value between the two hate maps, right? This looks like the perfect job for a smooth max function, so we should really see how to transform this smooth mean in a smooth max, shall we? If the function s represents what we have to subtract from the mean function to smooth it out, it may be that if we add it to the max function, we may obtain the same effect, but mirrored. Let's try. That's it, no fancy tricks here, just one simple intuition. This works because doing a max instead of a mean and adding instead of subtracting is like doing the exact same thing but with the graph flipped upside down, if you see what I mean. And regarding the blending gradient, you just have to mirror it. So, since it is in 0-1 range, you just have to subtract it from 1 or you could simply flip the conditions instead. I leave this simple change to implement in Unreal on your own this time, otherwise you can follow the link in the description and download the material function for the smooth max too. So, did you already know about this function? What do you think about it? Also, if you still doubt its usefulness, I suggest you to watch this video next, to learn about a real use case scenario. But first, let me know your thoughts in the comments, and if you have any other topic you'd like me to discuss in a future video.